uh, first I would like to uh, introduce Samrit, uh, who's with us today uh, in this call, uh, and is going to be running today's session. Samrit, uh, as you're all aware, is the CMO at Heads Up for Tales. It's actually category creation for a pet care brand, raised a lot of capital, and literally the front runner, also building a marketplace around that front. Samrit has been a grand idea in D2C, to be honest, because before uh, Heads Up for Tales, he's obviously been running uh, at Bombay Shaving Company, VP of Marketing. Uh, before that, uh, at Akiva Superfoods. So I think he has a safe and normal background with D2C. Before that, anyways, he's a marketing you know, genius from a point of view because I always check with him and he's one of those people I've always sort of, in some way, tried to work with at my, you know, original company that is my ad. But uh, he's one of those people you bounce a lot of great ideas with. And to be honest, when we were even thinking of building this D2C program, one of the first people I, you know, thought would be a great teacher uh, would be Samrit. The problem is Samrit is always very busy, uh, so he can. <laughs> so I couldn't get him for every session, but I. But he's volunteered to be, uh, you know, for our first session. Uh, I mean, if you go his LinkedIn profile, obviously you'll see he's, you know, uh, head of marketing at Dine Out before and Akash. Uh, so very very strong profile, uh, and I don't want to say any more. But uh, welcome Samrit. Uh, welcome. Thank you all. Uh, you know, so uh, I don't know how we we we, we clap our hands, but please. Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ, please don't don't do that. It's too early in the morning on Saturday to do that. <laughs> so that being said, Samrit, uh, this the stage is yours. Uh, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much, Sharada. Yeah. You were far too kind with your words. I don't think I'm an expert, and I have absolutely no granddaddy syndrome anywhere. Uh, also too young to be that. Would not want to be called that anytime soon. Uh, but. Uh, I, I was I was listening to the challenges, and honestly, I have uh, I have two or three things straight from the top of my head. Right, um, we are in we are unfortunately in a category that has not been created by external forces. Right, uh, look at it from this perspective: IT, IT is in India was created because there was a demand uh, of those services to be created. Right, so infrastructure was built people were trained, uh, money was flown in, and then suddenly before you knew, you knew it, a full industry was set up, right? Uh, similarly for manufacturing and real estate, uh, these were essentially services and sectors that were created because there was an emerging need for it. Uh, direct to consumer businesses, unfortunately, are the ones where we have had to spin off uh, from large scale brand portfolios because there was no choice, right? Uh, and there was very little that large organizations would end up giving. Uh, as part of their mantra, as part of their science, as part of their R&D and say, hey, here's a better product for the consumer. Uh, they were not really very interested in doing that. Uh, it came onto the back of uh, amazing people like you. And you said, hey, I'm going to pick this up and I'm going to make something that I genuinely believe the world needs. Uh, right? So it's difficult. It's not been done. Uh, I think it's about seven to eight years if you look at the direct-to-consumer industry. Uh, that's really the growth trajectory, right? It's uh, when you compare this to any other large scale industry, uh, we are probably just at the edge of the fledgling state. Uh, so the challenges that everyone is facing, I think these are just going to get compounded over a period of time. Uh, but having said that, if we can early stage get some of the things right, uh, then there's no reason for us not to be successful, right? Uh, just a few disclaimers. Uh, one, generally my energy levels are far higher. I'm recovering from a viral, so it will be a little lower. Uh, but I'll try my best uh, to be as, as forceful as I can be. If I take a break in the middle, please excuse me. Uh, second is that I hate PowerPoint presentations, so I haven't prepared one. Um, I am going to take you through a board that I generally believe will help us uh, speak. Uh, we will speak through this session, okay? So it's not me talking to you. Let's 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 try and converse as much as we can. Uh, if you can't hear me, stop me. Uh, if I'm going too fast, stop me. If I'm going too slow, let me know that hey, we have got this. Move on, uh, right? Uh, it's a large cohort, so I've tried to keep it as generic plus one level, uh, as opposed to being uh, super jargon heavy, which I personally hate, but. Uh, but I guess a lot of management schools have told us that if there's no jargon, then there is no right to passage. Uh, you won't find any here in this uh, deck. So apologies for it. Uh, but what I've also tried to do is I went through some of the challenges that you guys had put. Uh, why am I saying guys? I'm sorry, folks. Uh, there are more women in this cohort than there are men, which is always a good thing. Uh, and I, I went through some of the challenges. I've tried to answer them. Uh, I'm happy to answer more of them. I don't know the answer to a lot of them, uh, but whatever I don't know, 
let me assure you that I'll try and find someone who does. So I know this is a long session, Sharad, right? It's, it's a long program, right? This is just the start of the program. Uh, so Sharad and I are going to be working through this program. Uh, so even if there are certain questions that I don't have answers to uh, in the next two hours, Sharad and I will try and find a way to get you an answer to that, right? Uh, so that's, that's the only commitment. Um, I'll give you a very quick background to me so that uh, you understand why I am going to say a bunch of things that I would say. Uh, I'm, I, I just turned 38, so I'm not very old. Uh, I, uh, I started my career in filmmaking, uh, but I started it when I was 16, right? So it was, it was a long time back. Uh, I used to be a production assistant in, in a production house. So I used to literally be the guy who would put Chadu Bocha on the set and, and fetch artists and uh, you don't get food for people. Uh, so I thought that was superbly interesting. Uh, it was paying a lot of money in those days. I stayed in filmmaking for about five and a half, six years. Then I went on to uh, media sales. Uh, I used to work with them sometimes in their youth forum. So I used to uh, sell small little ads across the newspaper. That's what I used to do. Uh, graduated from college. Uh, I did a whole bunch of media related things till I started my own agency. Uh, I did that for about 10 years. Uh, I worked across Singapore, Malaysia, Hong Kong, uh, sold the company, uh, joined the Times Group, uh, very early stage into the Dynaut ecosystem. In fact, I was the first marketer to join the Dynaut ecosystem after they got acquired. Uh, I think Sharath, you and I probably spoke then, which was in 2015. Um, and, and since then I've just been at the intersection of consumer tech, consumer products, uh, so what, what I generally like to do is look at branding problems as not just branding problems, but as, uh, as experience problems, right? As business problems, because I think branding problems are fundamentally business problems. Uh, they're either technology problems or they're business problems or they're process problems or they're people problems. Uh, sometimes they're organizational problems, right? Uh, and the reason is because most of us haven't gone through the depth of maturity in this industry to be able to arrive at, hey, this is the right branding sentiment for me. This is the right message for me. Uh, this is my, this is my audience. Uh, this is exactly how they, uh, this is exactly what they want and this is exactly how they'll react, right? Large organizers deploy millions of dollars of research on top of it. We unfortunately don't make that much money so we can't deploy it, right? Uh, and by the time we have made that money, it's already too late. <laughs> so there's a whole bunch of gut and intuition and the straight away first principles. What I'm gonna share today, is my synthesis of the last seven, 10 years of having done this, okay? Um, I don't know if this is written down in a book as the best way to do it. This is the best way I have done it. Uh, if it helps, it helps. If it doesn't, please let me know. I will try to learn uh, and I will try to do better in terms of what I do next. Um, sure, it's okay if I share my screen. Excellent. All right. Cool. What I'm also going to do, because I'm extremely clear about the bandwidth in my house, is I'm going to turn my video off, right? I hope that's okay. Yeah? Yeah, that's fine. But okay, cool. Excellent. Yeah, I, I, if I try to do both, I know it's going to be extremely glitchy. Okay. Um, but stop me if you can't hear me, right? Just let me know, Charlotte, at any point. All right, uh, excellent. Does anyone know what this image is on top? Uh, I'm sorry, yeah, I'm, I'm such a, yes, it is. It's the 1930 flight, thank you so much. Uh, it's just one of my favorite images of all time. It just shows that two people just wanted to sort of get out there and do something extremely, uh, extremely powerful in many ways, right? They imagined it, uh, they did it, and today we, we sort of enjoy a whole bunch of things from there, right? Um, it's also a very powerful image because it, it shows the solitary man, right? Just, just this image in particular uh, just shows the solitary man and what has been built. Uh, so it's a, it's a lonely journey and I understand how lonely this journey can be, especially when you're building something. Uh, so that's the reason I want to start with that, uh, saying, hey, you know, it might be lonely right now, but it gets better as it goes along. Uh, having said that, Let's start. All right. I'm actually going to start with something uh, which I actually, as an exercise I did with my son uh, a few few weeks back. 
So I was telling the story of Mr. T, right? Uh, so Mr. T is a parent to two smart, beautiful, strong young girls. Uh, he's working with them. Uh, he's teaching them to be stronger. He's teaching them to be more independent, to be extremely self-aware. Uh, he's working hard to save the earth. Uh, T spends time nurturing a garden. Uh, he's creating a very beautiful place for him to retire. Uh, all of us do. I, I would I would love to retire in a place where there's a beautiful garden. Uh, and I've got my son and maybe uh, maybe my cat sort of running around. Uh, so T, T is kind of like that, right? He believes in sustainable living. He doesn't have a lot of belongings. So very minimal life. Uh, uh, definitely not me. Uh, I, I thrive in clutter. But, uh, but he loves the minimalistic life. And people fall in respect him, right? So that's, that's him. Uh, that's Mr. T. Uh, just, just straight up. Uh, what do you think of him? Do you think, do you think he's a good guy? Does he sound like he's a good guy? Uh, would you be friends with him? Yeah. Speak up. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, how 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 do you think he looks? Does he have a nice kind he face? He sounds like a saint. He sounds like a saint. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you think he has a Do you think he has a nice kind face? You know, all those like uh, intellectual beards, uh, nice glasses, sort of just taking care of the two kids. Not Is necessary. He one of <laughs> Not, Not necessary. necessary. Okay. Not necessary. Okay. No? Now it's simple that like kurta pajamas. Kurta pajama. Okay. Great. <laughs> well, would, would you trust him? The larger yeah. question is, would you trust him? Yes. Yeah. Yeah? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, Gaurav, Gaurav says, yeah, you're going to say beard. Exactly, right? Slightly sounds like Bruce Willis from Die Hard. A little bit of Bruce Willis from Die Hard. Fair enough, yeah. Very likable character also, you know. Uh, Bugger doesn't die. Uh, that makes him all the more likable. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, intuitively a good guy. Right? But that's him. <laughs> <laughs> we just spoke of Thanos. <clears throat> yeah. Right? We we just went through yeah, I, I don't know how many of your Avengers uh, fans, okay? I, yeah, I yeah, am I'm, I'm a big Marvel guy. Mm -hmm. I'm a huge okay, Marvel so guy. Okay. Right? Everyone wants to be friends with him suddenly. He seems like a saint. Uh, Bruce Willis, yeah, of course, uh, clearly, he has the same balding uh, demeanor to him, but... And also, the kurta pajama would be a different side. The kurta pajama might not be a very good fit for him, would it? <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, <even here. laughs> but, but, but here is where it starts to get interesting, right? How we write about our lives and our personal brand and how we reflect that onto the product and the service brand. Um, I think that's really where the difference comes in, right? So the difference comes in in the way that we take something as chaotic and crazy as Thanos, right? We have not ignored anything. It's just the way we have represented it, yeah? It's the gaze, it's the perspective, it's the positioning, and it's the choice of words, right? I want to keep this here for a bit with you. I want to leave this as a thought starter, right? That every time someone was to describe you, every time, every time someone was to describe your organization, right? The brand that you, or the service that you represent, um, they can either become people you trust, right? So you can be the best version of the people they trust, uh, or you could literally become Thanos. <laughs> Right, in so many different ways, in so many different uh, perspectives, right? Uh, so yeah, uh, having said that, I love starting brand exercises with the personal brand, okay? Because I think as founders, everything that we make is defined by the personal brand that we have. <clears throat> Sorry, and the personal brand is very, very critical to get right before we even get into product branding or service branding. Right? We'll go through the product and service branding pieces also, but first let's try and tackle the personal brand. Okay. So for me, the personal brand, it, it honestly, it starts with you, right? Um, and here's a framework that I, I have always tried to work with any of the founders that I engage with, right? So this is what I try to break it down for them. I say, hey, you know, who are you really, right? And it's, it's extremely important to be able to succinctly state who you are. Right. Uh, it's we, of course, we say, Hey, we are founders. We are 
entrepreneurs, we are creators, we are marketers, we could, that's what we do, that's not who we are. Who we are is different. I, as a person, I am a thinker, yeah? I'm a writer. That's how I started. That's how I'll end. That's who I am, right? So I'm a creator to begin with. Who am I trying to influence or who am I, who am I trying, trying to speak to? Uh, sorry, is a, is a function of what my largest cohort who engage with me are, right? So right now, if I'm trying to speak to you and if I'm trying to influence you, then I know that you are a bunch of really enterprising young, bright, smart people who just know business and know how to create something which is extremely difficult in this world, right? Uh, so I'm speaking to you. So I'm trying to influence you, which essentially means that I should be able to recognize what your needs and desires are, right? Uh, what are you most confident about? I'm most confident about speak, speaking about brand challenges, growth marketing, uh, product market fit. That's what I'm really, really confident about, right? Uh, why is that interesting to others? Uh, hey, clearly there's a bloody need gap in the market, uh, right? And uh, it takes time and effort to build out clarity of thought. Uh, and if I can solve someone's problems uh, at a fraction of the time, then it's clearly interesting to them, right? Uh, is this something unique to me? Uh, yeah, I would guess so, at least in this cohort, yes. Uh, in another cohort may not be, but in this cohort, yes, it is unique to me. Uh, are people willing to spend time listening to you? Um, the answer is very obvious, yes. And I'm very humbled by that. Uh, but yes, if people are willing to spend time listening to you, uh, then that clearly means that there is a certain degree of respect, trust, authority, or at least appreciable authority that's there, right? Um, do you have a unique way of saying what you do? Uh, yeah, most likely. Uh, even changing the medium and not doing a PowerPoint and going like this is also a unique way of saying it. Uh, or maybe starting with Thanos is probably a unique way of saying it. So at least you're doing something different. Uh, who else says the same about you? Sharif did, and I'm hoping that at the end of this, uh, the other 30 of you will in some or the other form. I just took you through me as my personal brand, right? And tomorrow, if I was to start an organization, um, if I was to go back and look at the 10 years of running my own agency, I used to do all of this. I used to wake up and I say, hey, my agency is a creator first agency. We are here to create content. We are here to create solutions. Um, we were speaking to a very specific set of emerging Indian businessmen. In those days, unfortunately, there were more businessmen than, than women. So yeah, there's, it, it was a gender skew. What, was, what were we more confident about? We were most confident about building business marketable solutions for them. Why was that interesting? Because they were not ready to work with large scale agencies. They needed smaller players like us to solve critical business problems for them. Uh, was it something unique to us? Uh, yeah, there were only two or three people who were really doing it at that, that time. So it was clearly very unique to us. Were people willing to spend time? Yes, and they were willing to spend money on us. Uh, did we have a unique way of saying it? Yes, because we were extremely uh, consultative as well as we had a creative bent. So we could solve business problems because of our creativity. Um, so we did have a unique way of sort of putting out challenges there. And who else did the same about us? All of our clients did, right? So we started with one client, went on to about 150 clients. Um, so by that logic, everyone was a referral from the other, right? Extremely relevant when you're looking at your own businesses. So if you were to take your business and you were to take your own personal brand and see, the, today is about frameworks, right? Today is not about, hey, let's, bring something up and start solving it. I think it's going to take an inordinate amount of time to do that at 30, one is to one. Uh, but take this framework and write this for yourself, right? Um, and try to be as brutally bloody critical as you can be. Yeah? So, so don't try to glorify yourself. I think when we do that, we end up missing out on the areas of improvement. Uh, earlier, I used to say, hey, I'm... I'm I'm a growth marketer with media and technology and all of that. And I'm like, hey, listen, no one cares yet because you sound like a bloody generalist, right? So matlab, stop trying to be everything to everyone and just focus on what you really can do. right? So I started to say no to a bunch of things that I personally thought I was good to say, but wouldn't add any value. Similarly with your business. Similarly with everything that we're writing on a website and we'll go through it, right? So we'll just go through that experience also. Every time we are picking up something to write, to communicate, can we be so brutally honest and say, 
दिस इज एक्चुअल फैर फर्क नहीं पड़ता छोड़ दो एवरी वन सर्ड इट एवरी वन नोज इट इट्स इट्स नाउ जस्ट इंफॉर्मेशन देर बिकॉज एट सम पॉइंट वेन वी स्टार्ट वी थॉट दिस वॉज इंपॉर्टेंट राइट इज सर एनी वन हियर हु थिंक्स दे हैव नेल दिस इन देर बायो ऑन लिंक मे बी एनी वन हु थिंक्स एट डू आई कॉप दिस शिट्स ऑर इट राइट लाइक एवरी टाइम आई रिटर्न दिस डाउन i have written about who i am um how am i trying to influence people uh what am i most confident about maybe it's there on my website maybe it's maybe it's how my product speaks if there's anyone who thinks that their bio is almost there would love to go through it because i personally haven't cracked it as yet very well so i would shamelessly steal <laughs> but uh but if there isn't then i think this is a journey that we'll all have to go through right um remember this still doesn't ask a question which is what is your purpose in the world and what change are you trying to bring okay there's a reason for that those are large format statements people unfortunately find it extremely difficult to engage with extremely large format statements because the change that you are going to bring in the world needs to be reflected in the work that you do and there's a reason why it's not there yeah um so i want to start with the person brand before we go on to anything else because a personal brand if you define it really well and if you know who we are and why we are here and what we are doing and who we want to speak to what is the influence that we want uh, to bring about and are people really willing to listen to me and if they're not willing to listen to me then clearly there's a problem and i need to work on that piece uh, is what i'm saying unique or is the way that i'm saying it unique uh, and is there someone else who says it about me think about it it's exactly the way we would like to build out our product pieces right uh, let's get into the product pieces any questions here i'm happy to stop and take questions and then we can move to the next piece in fact i think that's a better better way of doing it yeah tushar i think you raise your hand you have a question i did not have a question basically he said that uh, uh he said about the linkedin bio thing yeah and and i actually tried doing that ki yaar i was writing bios pehle ki यार लोगों को इन्फ्लुएंस करना है लिखना है बट नाउ व्हेन आई एक्चुअली फेल्ड लाइक इट्स बीन 6 इयर्स सिंस आई हैव डन कंप्लीटेड माय एमएससी एंड बैक टू माय बिजनेस एंड आई फेल्ट दैट कि यार कितना दिन तक यू विल ट्राई टू इन्फ्लुएंस पीपल जस्ट बी द पर्सन यू आर एंड एंड जस्ट राइट व्हाट यू फील अबाउट योर ओन सेल्फ सो आई ट्राइड डूइंग दैट ऑन लिंक्डइन आई एम हैप्पी बिकॉज़ समटाइम्स पीपल डू रीड एंड दे से यार तुम ये क्या लिखा है बट आई एम लाइक it's okay it's it's the person i am so takes away pressure bro yeah takes away so much pressure no it's it's not about the pressure it's not about the pressure it's it's about uh it, it's it's a pressure at a certain stage but uh, when one once you're done with it then then you don't uh, really think about it it's it's like a part and parcel of your life yeah yeah that would be it excellent but are there are there any questions across no no thank you so i have a question samrith yes so for linkedin or building a personal brand um it is so much about talking about yourself and what you have done and what you know your thought process versus i see a lot of people on linkedin sharing general things which is of value addition to other people no it's not about themselves so how do you balance that and do you think the first part like when you have to tell people what you have you are doing or what work for you is it not like borderline self obsessing or is that okay to share it's it's very very okay to share uh, we get very few opportunities out there in this world to let people know what we do uh, i'm not saying you you're going to be sort of out there in people's faces uh, there's a certain amount of subtlety that we always bring to our communication so we'll do that but having said that should you miss out on an opportunity where you're able to tell people what value you will be able to add to their life please don't miss that opportunity let people know what value you will be able to add to their lives i think that's the most important piece instead of saying that i am uh, i'm a biochemist for example can you say that i'm a biochemist who is working on uh changing the way that you have interacted with your toothpaste right just 
giving a very, very random example, right? Uh, which is going to make sure that, uh, you know, you, you, your gums don't bleed and you're able to uh, sort of sleep better. A toothpaste that helps you sleep better. I don't know. Actually, hey, that's, a, that's not a bad product. Huh? Uh, yeah, but, but here's the thing. If you're being able to add value to people's lives by virtue of what you know really, really well, strong suggestion and submission would be pleased to tell them. Uh, don't, don't be cocky. I don't think any of us in this cohort are, and that's the reason why I'm not stating all these things. Uh, but if you can do it with a certain sense of humility, and if you can do it in a way that it makes life easier for others, then yes, 100%, yeah. uh, Ritika, you should. Uh, there's, there's nothing that should stop you from doing so. Shivani and Gaurav. Uh, Shivani, first to you. Hey. Um, okay. So, uh, uh, while building a personal brand, right? So, um, I think I consider myself a multi-passionate entrepreneur. So, I think striking that balance has been something I've kind of struggled with because I've always placed a lot of importance on building my personal brand. And uh, I'm an accessory designer, so uh, my startup is a brand of sustainable and vegan lifestyle accessories. But uh, on the weekends, I'm an artist um, and I care a lot about uh, Indian art forms and that's what I was doing before this session as well as working on my next piece. Um, so how do I balance these two aspects of my personality and who I am because they're both things I'm extremely passionate about. Um, so uh, my Instagram, what I do is I keep my Instagram uh, more oriented to my art and I keep my LinkedIn more oriented to my startup and my business. Um, so I would love to know your tips on can I, something like can that. I say, can I say something? And yes. <laughs> why do you want to control this? Uh, um, if I was you, I would unleash it. Okay. You know what I would do? Hmm. I would like, I am not an accessory designer. I'm an artist hmm. who sees the world hmm. differently. Okay. That's what you are, but, Shivani. I, okay. You don't have two separate states of being. You just have two different ways of expressing your art. Mm. That's the difference. The difference is not in Shivani version one versus Shivani version two. It's still Shivani. Mm. I would unleash the fuck out of it, man. Like I'm yeah. going to take that Instagram and put it on LinkedIn and say, here's my art. This is what mm. inspires me. This is what I've been building. Mm. I thrive in India. I have built in India. I am bringing India in forms and shapes and sizes and colors and textures and patterns that you have not seen before. And here is the first reflection of it in my jewelry. And here's the second reflection of it in my art. And here's a third reflection of it in something that you will build as you go on. You, you are an India art brand as an individual. You will just find different manifestations of it in terms of business. So, heck no, unleash it. <laughs> All right, okay. Yeah, I think, I think because the challenge has been, I've seen a lot of people in my space because I'm uh, in sustainability and we make wallets and handbags, etc. Yeah. Um, so a lot of people in my space are use their LinkedIn to talk more about sustainability, about the environment, about all these things that they care about. And I'm like, okay, where does my art fit into all of this? And it's just all of it. Confusing. Okay. See, but, we're the same people who are on LinkedIn, right? Yeah. So I have started to spend more time, sorry, more time on LinkedIn than I than I was doing on uh, Instagram. Hmm. Um, I think I'm just getting to be a little older for Instagram. Uh, I'm still okay with LinkedIn. But, but the fact is, Instagram's become, uh, LinkedIn's become boring because I think everyone is seeing the same thing. But if I get a beautiful dash of art in the middle of my day uh, and I see a process for it, I'm far more inclined towards consuming it. So in fact, you have a fantastic opportunity because LinkedIn, the mind space that people have still, uh, you you will be able to create that mind space and give them something that is far more refreshing as opposed to being on Instagram where everyone is consuming the same kind of content. And for you to then be different on Instagram is problematic, but for you to be different on LinkedIn is not. And content, unfortunately, in today's world needs to be different. Otherwise, people don't consume it. Yeah. So actually, I will use it very, very differently. <laughs> yes, okay. 
Thank you. Yeah, That's no worries. Got it. <laughs> All right. So I I had a question because I, I mean you had when you were kind of going through this, and I kind of understand where you're coming from. You were talking about you know, we all kind of tend to maybe generalize and be generalists. And you yeah. said, you know, maybe kind of take out some of the stuff that is not necessarily uh, as important to you and, you know, kind of make it a little more special, right? Or uh, kind yeah. of more sort of, okay, this is who you are. Uh, but I think that's where for me personally, um, I feel like one of my biggest strengths and I'm, I'm not, I'm not, is the fact that I have over the course of my experience gathered so much, all different kinds of experience. All of that has culminated into this becoming my startup. For instance, I have an MBA in finance. I yep. work as a professional storyteller for a year and a half. Right? Yep. Uh, I've also done a little bit uh, of, I run a music events company on the side because I'm also very passionate about the arts. So, I mean, it's kind of like, you know, I have so many different aspects of this and each of one of them add, bring in a different side to me. You know, there's a storytelling side, there's a, finance, ops, you know, like numbers heavy side. Uh, yeah. So for me, every time I think about my brand, I think about the fact that I have this kind of diverse experience that uh, sets me apart. Um, and so I was very interested to kind of get your thoughts on this, this generalist versus, versus specialist kind of distinction and kind of where, you know, you could draw the line essentially. As your personal brand, please mm -hmm. recognize that you are not a generalist at all. In fact, you're a specialist of multiple things. Okay, uh, a generalist would be someone who would just be an MBA finance and then just dabble in a few things. You are yeah. clearly tr running two organizations, so you're not a generalist by that by that logic anymore. Because you, uh, of course, have people working for you. There's a responsibility that's there, and you're able to generate revenue across the board, right? So it's not being a generalist anymore. So you're a specialist of multiple things, which is a fantastic thing to speak of. Okay. Uh, but as a brand, Polka Pop, right? Uh, I don't think Polka Pop really uh, benefits. Yeah, of course, your employee base benefits uh, yeah. and maybe your stakeholders benefit from your MBA in finance. Yeah. But Polka Pop might not benefit from your MBA in finance as a narrative, right? Yeah. What it will benefit from is your cultural appreciation of music and you know events and life in general, right? Uh, and just understanding youth. So if you were to look at that side of your life, then you're able to contextualize it to Polka Pop, mm -hmm. yeah. right? No. So, so I, think, I think that's the way you should look at it. You're still being able to let go of one thing from your organization, uh, sorry, from your credentials for your company. But for everything else, you are a, you're not a generalist, you're just a specialist of multiple things. Okay, all right. So kind of just, so, I mean, I mean, the only reason I brought in the MBA because it's the easiest way to kind of say different kinds of specialization. I mean, I mean, personally, I have multiple thoughts about an MBA, so we'll get to that later. Uh, no, that's okay, man. Uh, don't <laughs> be sad on MBAs. <laughs> okay. So, right, okay, yeah. this is the last question I can take for this piece because then I do have to move to the next one. So, Avinash. Yeah. So, uh, so while building a personal brand, so we have this, uh, you know, different... Uh, platform facebook has a different uh, thing you know insta is different so how much yeah. uh, modification should we do in our uh, you know building brand building process according to the platform like linkedin will be more professional or should we like you know just say like how we are in whatever words we feel would be we feel is right but perhaps may not be relevant for that uh, platform so you know what sort of consistency should we have um to be yourself uh, when you meet people at, in different parts of your life, right? So when you're with people in office, you're with them in a certain way, but the core of Avinash is not gone. And then when you walk out of office and you're with your friends, the core of Avinash is not gone. The core of Avinash is still you. Uh, the core of Samrit is still Samrit. Uh, Samrit is someone who genuinely loves to, you know, read, have fun. Uh, he, I am, I am a little on the reticent uh, reserved side. So I am not the life of the party, unfortunately. So you will not suddenly see me jump around and do a bunch of things. Um, I love music. Uh, yes, I might be with my college friends on a choice of music and go from Honey Singh to something. Uh, yeah, okay, Honey Singh. Uh, but when I'm with my in-laws, maybe my choice of music is a little different, but there is still music which is a constant in my life, right? So if someone comes over for lunch, there'll be music on. If someone comes over for dinner, there'll be music on. It's just a choice of music will become a little different, right? Uh, 
I like to read. Uh, when I am reading business books, I'm reading business books. When I'm reading fiction, I'm reading fiction. But there are certain things that define me, right? So as the same way, there'll be certain things that define you. Uh, sure. I think as long as you know that LinkedIn is not the place where you are putting your drunken pictures, maybe, and 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 Instagram is not uh, where you're putting your job op- opportunities, maybe. I don't know. Actually, I don't know what people use Instagram for anymore. Uh, everyone's using it for everything. Um, and maybe on Facebook, you're realizing that it's mostly just uncles and aunties. Uh, you're okay. Dude, I'm sorry. I don't really have an answer for that. The answer is that just be yourself and you will figure it out until someone from your family doesn't come around in seven hours. What are you doing? Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, like I, I, I ended up posting about uh, a job change I know on Facebook and then someone came and started to write Shubh Kamna and all of that. And I was like, hang on. Uh, this this was not needed. Uh, and then they ended up tagging like almost every second person in my in-law side. And I was like, okay, this is not what I wanted, but this is the outcome of Facebook. So I'm just not going to do that again, right? So I learned. I think it just comes down to you being aware of what the media is going to give you and what kind of people you have in that media or on the platform, right? But be you, man. Um, I don't know how else to be. This is the way I speak. Even when I'm in office, this is the way I'll speak now that I'm with you. This is the way I'll speak when I'm with my friends. Uh, my tonal variations, my style, my choice of words, and my ability to say nonsensical things remains constant. Got it. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. All right. Uh, this was the easy part. The personal brand is the easy part. We haven't even gone to the product and service brand. And I, I'm just really realizing we have one hour left. I have no idea how we're going to do this. But we're going to do this somehow. Okay. All right. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to try and find a brand voice. Okay. Uh, sorry, clearly you know my love for animals. So it's up there. Um, but let's find the brand voice. Okay. Most of us, <coughs> I'm sorry, this is something that I actually saw as a constant uh, across. We use words like premium, luxury, innovative, new age, modern, etc. When we are writing about our brand. In fact, that's literally what we started one of the conversations with, right? Where, uh, but I think one of you mentioned that you're a premium priced brand. Uh, and, and that troubles me. And I'll tell you why that troubles me. Premium is what people perceive. Okay. Uh, it's not a market determinant price point. Okay. So in the market, you will have aspects of a karma that exists as you have a 99 rupee, uh, you know, a face pack that's available from Jolene maybe or someone. Right. Uh, the fact is, Premium is something that you can command by virtue and value of the product or the experience of the product or the service, right? Uh, someone is selling luxury diamonds and clearly it's not so much a premium challenge here because people are willing to pay for it. Uh, then we have, you know, then we have wellness brands in this cohort uh, where it's so bloody cluttered that there is no way right now that you can actually end up charging a premium because there is just a market fight happening, right? So what if we were to stop slotting ourselves as a premium, luxury, innovative, new age, modern? It's just it's just one of those things that has just been used so many times that it bloody well doesn't make any sense anymore. Yeah, Everyone says the same thing. Let's try and break our brands down into how's the brand as a person. We just went through the personal branding piece, right? So how is this brand as a person? Uh, example, Nike. How's Nike as a person? Clearly, Nike as a person is someone who has, uh, who's an athlete, uh, who likes to run, who likes to stay fit, um, who believes in community engagement, uh, who loves color, uh, who loves a certain degree of design and simplicity. Right. So Nike as a person is that. Nike as a person is someone who, um, who has flaws because they do not always make the best shoe, but they make the, but they try and do the next version better. Uh, right, the Air Maxes have gone through multiple iterations. Clearly, I'm an Nike fan, so I can speak to it. Uh, their Air Maxes have gone through multiple iterations, and they have evolved over the last few years. Right, uh, so they're not without their faults. Uh, they're ambitious. Uh, they got Asics, uh, right, and the way they have built out Asics and the way they have built out Onyx Super, I think, is a fantastic way that they have diversified the product portfolio. So, as a person, it's a it's a bright young person who's doing something superbly brilliant. 
the brand is product or a service. Uh, product and services are there fundamentally to solve problems. Uh, but that's our obligation. That's the functional thing that we do. Uh, what is the, what's the genuine emotional benefit that someone gets out uh, when they're wearing a Nike shoe? Uh, they feel that they can run better. Uh, so as a product, we are enabling people. As a product, we are scientifically developed. As a product, we are, uh, Nike is, sorry, scientifically developed. As a product, Nike uh, has a certain amount of research and development and rigor and testing that's gone in. Uh, as a service, whenever you go and buy something in Nike, it's a very consultative service. So you have people who are going to help you find your right fit and they're going to make you run on the treadmill for a bit so that you get your gait right and you can get your stride right and so on and so forth. Um, so Nike as a brand or a product and service is an extremely conscious brand um, and, a, and a careful brand because they like to make sure that they're getting everything right. Uh, as a community, Nike as a community is fundamentally about uh, bringing people together for the love of running and over the love of fitness. Actually more about the love of running than the love of fitness. I think fitness is more Reebok and Nike is more running. Um, so in this, uh, the tribe that Nike has been able to create is it political? Is it fun? Is it innovative? Is it creative? Right? It could be anything. And when you start to look at the tribe that you're creating, you should be able to have an answer for that. So if you write this down once, then you'll solve for it over and over and over again. Right? The fact is that we keep stumbling from one to the other without really having defined it at any moment of time. Right? So today, if, uh, if Shivani, you have to, for example, write this, and say, okay, how is Arch? Is is it is it Archer? Archer? How do I pronounce it? It's an Archer, like nature. It's Archer. Art oh, like nature. Archer. Yeah. Okay. Archer. <laughs> Excellent. Right. Um, now maybe that is something to solve for. <laughs> right. Okay. So Archer. Right. Uh, so if you were to describe Archer as a brand, you would have the whimsical, uh, you know, Indian flavor straight out there. Right. So he's <laughs> so we'll be able to see Archer as a uh, as an idea, as a person, right? And then you should be able to clearly define uh, Archer is genderless, you know, maybe at some point, right? So it's, Archer is very gender fluid, uh, but Archer is extremely creative and Archer is opinionated, right? Uh, Nourish Mantra, for example, right? Uh, when you when you want to look at your product, Ritika, you are probably at the same time looking at uh, a product that is clean and a product that is uh, nutritional and the, a product that is uh, good for you and good for the planet, right? Uh, and as a service, you're providing clean services, you know, providing sustainability services, and you're providing services that are well-meaning from an eco standard, right? So you you have all of that. Uh, and there'll be a certain degree of certification that would already be there in the service. So you're bringing that part out. Uh, Polka Pop as people and a community, dude, I mean, I think this is this is really where your space comes in. Uh, where if you have a community of people who are able to sort of show people, it, it, yours is that soda thing, right? If I'm not wrong. Yeah, the sparkling. Yeah, water. right, sparkling water, right? So, uh, as a community, you are you're in a stage where Red Bull was, right? I and mean, if you can look at the cultural impact of uh, polka pop, right, you should be able to see that hey, how many people have just picked up a polka pop, and how many people of how many of them are having it, right? And that's the first 1,000 people you want as part of your evangelist group. And then they bring in more people and they bring in more people, right? But as a community, how are they? Are they fun-loving? Are they the ones who are outside at night, drinking away? Um, are they in pubs? Are they having this during the day? Uh, are they superbly young and they're going to move to the next big fad? Or are they people who are generally just loving this for the taste and the feel and they'll be there for a longer period of time? Are they the fitness community or are they the community which is just party-going community, right? Uh, not that there might not be an overlap, but most of us belong to very specific communities, right? And then we have like a primary community and a secondary community. That's how it generally works. Uh, as a company, right? Uh, if I was to look at Shararat, uh, are you a fun company? Are you a new age, innovative, technology-driven company? Or are you, are you a company which is traditional, old school, uh, very strong value systems, extremely uh, well-defined structures of being? Right, uh, both are both can coexist, but sometimes you know one does take over the other. So a definition of Shararat would be a fantastic uh, way of looking at you as a company, right? And as social impact, what change are we trying to bring in about the world, right? 
And I think that's critical. Okay. So if we were to if you were to look at the social impact pieces that we are trying to bring in, um, it becomes a little easier for us to describe why we are here over a longer period of time, right? Uh, the last piece, by the way, is what most large organizations start with. Okay. So when Unilever, PNG, you know, shells uh, of the world, they stand up and they say, Tata's, for example, they stand up and say, we are here to change the world by you know, making water accessible to people or making, uh, you know, sanitation and hygiene better for people. Or we are here because we want to build an infrastructure for India, which is what Tata says, right? So when they say these things, they're putting these large scale social impact messages and those social impact messages then further define corporate philosophy, product philosophy, so on and so forth, right? Harish, go on, please. You're on mute, bro. You're still on mute. And you are still on mute. Sorry, sorry, sorry about that. Can you hear me now? Yes. Sorry about that. Um, uh, and sorry to interject here, but I thought Not it's um, apt to intervene and say that when you talk about finding your brand voice, uh, it is spread across multiple avenues. Um, how is the brand as a person? On a functional level, how is the brand differentiated? What is the social impact you are creating? And, uh, you know, all entrepreneurs on this platform are basically straddling the space between being practical and telling a story. <clears throat> so, um, you know, while you're um, uh, articulating your brand story, um, you will have to, uh, you mentioned that in the wellness space, um, there are, um, you know, many brands and the clutter is very strong, etc. My, um, you know, problem is that many a time when we define a positioning statement, it is imperative that we stick to something that is going to stick with the brand for the long haul. Case in point, when you launch a brand that is differentiated in terms of functionalities, when you, in the initial three to four years, your positioning statement is going to revolve around what is it that you're offering to the consumer differently. So in all probability, you're going to focus on what is different in my product in terms of functionality and the story revolves around that. As your brand evolves, you will perhaps turn more to the storytelling aspect that I am more fun as a brand. I am more, um, you know, big brother as a brand, etc. This is my reading of it. So I do you agree with the statement that uh, different aspects of these voice are to be chosen based on the different life cycle of a brand? A lot of it is dictated by, um, you know, what is the necessity of the brand at this stage? For example, if you're launching a brand in the initial years, all you're thinking of is trying to do the survival. I need to, you know, develop my brand till year three. Then I take, then I uh, let it assume a different persona. Uh, so do you agree with this theory or do you propose that we stick to one solid position statement, which we'll hold for five years down the line? All right. I am breaking your question down into two parts. Yeah. One is what's important. And second is what, what is seemingly important. Okay. Uh, the two different things, unfortunately. Um, I don't, and again, as I said, conjecture, um, I don't think there's any reason for you to stick to anything for five years. Right, yeah. uh, and here's the, and here's the reason why, uh, I think, as I mentioned, D2C has been around for the last seven to eight years. When you look at it, right. Till before that, it was mostly very small set of businesses. Uh, the ecosystem's only evolved as of now, right? So the way people have started to consume D2C brands is very, very new. It's very nascent. Uh, I don't think any philosophical statement or any brand statement that you put today uh, will remain very true over the next few years. If you evolve very fast, or if you grow very fast, you realize that you'll bring in new, new products, you'll bring in new services, you'll bring in new ways of looking at things, right? Uh, so it's not so much a, a line slash a brand positioning platform that's written in stone, okay? And that will evolve. So I agree with you that it's not something that's going to remain for five years. But here is where I genuinely believe that you need to answer all of these from day one and try to stick to some of these. Otherwise, and you know, depends on the industry that you come with, Harish. I'm sorry, I, I can't figure out what which brand you represent. 
so we are basically into beverages um, you know yeah. like water as well but we u- utilize a lot of plant extracts and natural ingredients in our beverages for different different areas like a hangover like immunity for lifestyle etc so got it are- got it got it i've got it got it got it fair enough so uh, fair enough been in that industry so i understand it well uh, so here is the thing right i don't think some of the fundamentals change harish right as a person you're not going to change man if you're doing this because you genuinely love the idea of ayurveda or you love the idea of natural ingredients uh no matter what you do with the brand you are going to have that right yeah you're not going to let go of that suddenly you're not you're not going to get in alcoholic beverages or synthetic beverages in just because there's a market demand for it right at least that's my assumption because if you started off with a principle that principle will remain as a product and service you will still like to be a problem solver but clearly you are a problem solver right you're saying that you package things that solve problems for people the way you solve those problems might differ today it's in a beverage from tomorrow it might be in a form of tablet third day it might be in a form of a spritz fourth day it might be in a form of a melt in your mouth or whatever it is right you might change yeah. the form but as yeah. a functional offer you are going to keep working on solving problems for people community that you're going to serve is still the same community this is a health centric uh, wellness first community there will be different people who will come in and evolve that community which means that you're going to have a 70 year old who's going to come in and say give me something for arthritis and you're going to have a 16 year old who's going to come in and say give me something for pcod but uh, yeah but the but the core of the community is still going to be wellness seekers right and natural wellness seekers right yeah. and it's a community yeah. that is growing it's a community that wants to help each other and grow with each other right yeah as a company right as a company i again don't see you evolving to a point where you suddenly will become a completely different version of yourself right the people mm. that you're going to have in your r&d are people who can work with indigenous natural ingredients for example right your packaging team is still going to be the same because you would want to make sure that your packaging costs are low and your turnarounds are better and you know there's a certain integrity to the packaging and so on and so forth right Mm. that's going to remain and a social mm. impact again you're going back to the same piece right uh, you are looking at an environmental impact where you're going to be looking at indigenous uh, and spices and so on and so forth and you're going to work with that right so your social yeah. impact is going to be about giving back to nature also so yep. as long as this core is clear as long as this core is clear and it remains constant your positioning statement is irrelevant this is finding the voice right this is not so much a brand campaign that you will run a brand campaign is coca cola saying hey open happiness but the core premise of coca cola is still about reflect refreshment and you know happy times that still remains today it's about today it's about taste the feeling earlier open happiness and so on and so forth so don't, don't mix the two that's my that's my submission sure okay yeah. thank you thank you no worries man sachin yeah hi so uh, continuing to this uh, discussion i wanted to uh, understand one point like for products we may be wanting to uh, brand and sell on uh, advantages or like uh, benefits yeah, yeah. but uh, when you talk about uh, as a company or a brand uh, it should be like uh, how fun are we how lovely are we or how innovative are we but is this for internal branding or as in i want i am really confused as in how a customer is uh, concerned regarding ye company to bahut fun loving company hai iska product lete hain ya fir for example se akiva ya bombay shaving abhi bombay shaving company is a good name but uska hi product kyu lunga aur main beardo ka product kyu nahi lunga ya beardo ka lena chahiye kyunki wo aisa hai to this is really confusing to me how is that important okay so why that is important is you are not just building a company for your customers you're building it so that you can build uh, a a network of people who work with you right so one of the things that you need to perceive or you need to build as perception is how you are as an organization because how you are as an organization defines the kind of partnerships you do the kind of employees you get the kind of institutional sales you do the the kind of investors you get the kind of stakeholders you end up getting into your system so today if bombay shaving company is perceived to be a premium brand right and beardo is considered to be a more mass mass premium brand when investors look at bombay shaving company and i'm i'm trying to see you make you see the brand as a whole 
सो डोंट थिंक ऑफ द ब्रांड एज मेरा प्रोडक्ट है ठीक है वो एक प्रोडक्ट साइड आपका एक प्रोडक्ट साइड है बट आपका ब्रांड आपका हर आपका हर एम्प्लॉई है राइट सो एवरी एम्प्लॉई हु इज गोइंग आउट इन टू द मार्केट इज इज अ रिप्रेजेंटेटिव ऑफ योर ब्रांड ओके एवरी एलमनाई हु गोज आउट फॉर योर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इज अ रिप्रेजेंटेटिव ऑफ योर ब्रांड every time you get an investor into your ecosystem that person is also a representative of your brand right now the brand will have different ways of getting built there are some people who are going to stand up and say hey i love what uh, nabeat does because uh, these guys are just so conscious about their employee base right and conscious about the employee's health for example right uh, and that's an important piece so if you're concerned about your employee's health then most likely you're going to just take all the right measures to make sure that you're also concerned about your customers health and the health of the products and so on and so forth so when you look at a brand now kuch bhi isolation mein nahi chalta hai sachin what you write on linkedin is extremely important for your in- investors to get influenced what you write on instagram is also something that your employees end up sharing and your team ends up sharing and so on and so forth so the brand gets built in multiple ways you have to make sure that the story is consistent across now you might choose one aspect and say i'm going to focus mostly on the product piece because that's the more important piece for me feel free to but just make sure that when you focus on the product piece you're also telling the story of what has been who has created that product so you might have an r&d team which has created the product feel free to speak about them right you might have a designer who's done a fantastic job on the product feel free to speak about them they're also representatives of the brand and that is why the people in the brand and the company becomes an extremely important piece of how the brand is perceived today if you are in an uber and you think that the uber management doesn't give a shit about you then most likely you're not going to be taking it right and which is a perception that uber has gone through so they've been trying to change it for a very long period of time right so small little things make sure that over a period of time you build for it because when it comes time ta- when the time comes to build for it you might not have enough sort of articulation to build it it might already be too late kyunki aapne kabhi uske bare mein baat hi nahi kari hai you have never spoken about what's inside nabiyaz right so choose two or three of these pieces i think they are important but you don't necessarily have to focus on only two go ahead all right ravina like you mentioned about beardo for example if supposedly we take when they started off they were maybe we were perceiving them as a premium or a brand which is new and niche and all of that but yeah. now the after 4 5 years 6 years of their operation now they positioned or now they are in a space where it is a mass brand yeah so how did they jump and why did they jump and just because they were getting more customers their orders were of course increasing their sales were increasing tenfolds which is why they changed their conception or they changed their whole thought process from something which was niche to a very very mass thing so is so, the direction so, because to increase sales you have to go there or how no, no not really ravina um actually the beard market was extremely niche uh, so in the 10000 crore sort of the 30000 crore person ka category of which 10000 crore is the men and 20000 crore is women of the 10000 crore is probably only 1800 crore is the overall beard market in that 1800 crore that is beard market the 30% kaga year on year growth has happened over the last 3 years so when you look at those numbers right uh, you are at a point where the inflection in the market has happened only very recently now because inflection in the market happened extremely recently we call it the virat kohli syndrome and and the virat kohli syndrome is essentially what has fueled this entire generation of uh, new beard uh, acquirers right uh, so it's not so much that beardo changed the consumer changed okay and when the consumer changed and when more brands came in and price points became very difficult to fight um, i think beardo is still one of those brands which is which still commands a price premium by the way um, if you look at the product range uh, there are far cheaper brands <laughs> that are there in the market uh, and those creates mi- minor sort of dents what beardo did is that they masked up the brand uh perception and the persona by getting in so many celebrities across regional uh, aspirations uh and regional pockets what beardo also realized very early stages is that the game that they had to fight was a regional game and not a national game beard is not a national game okay 
So Beard game is unfortunately still a very North and a South centric game. The East and the West is not a Beard game, right? So when you look at the market space, uh, the East and the West is still a pro shaving market and South and North and North, especially Kerala and down Antra are the two markets that are there. So they have, they have played, according to me, they have played an extremely tactically strong game uh, because they had the money to do so. Uh, but till before that, they were doing all the right things. So when they got the money, they were in a position to use it. Uh, and I think a lot of us are going to be in the stage right now that what happens when you get the money, right? So if imagine that you suddenly are given a whole bunch of money from an Imami or Marico, whosoever, right? Or a PNG comes in and says, here is, here is shit tons of cash. Uh, now go and build a brand. You can't at that time be defining ki mera brand story kya hai, meri philosophy kya hai, mein kya hoon, mera product or service mein mein kya bolunga, meri community kya hai. Us time pe agar define karna shuru kar hoge, toh fir by the time the money hits the bank, you're already halfway through the runway, no? So what's the use? So all these definitions are extremely critical at this moment. So you're able to then say, hey, when the money comes, I'm able to reduce the price premium, go a little bit more mass, not dilute my core but bring in more products and bring in more innovative products that are able to create niches to scale in the market. So yeah, I mean, Beard was a classic example. Sorry, it was a extremely close category to me, which I worked on for a very long period. So I could, I could speak to the numbers there. Uh, all right, I am extremely cognizant we have only 40 minutes, um, but this is good. Uh, Sharath, if need be, we might need to do another one, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Let's do let's uh yeah let's go through this sound perfect yeah okay uh no so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to take everyone through the story architecture now okay uh we've just spoken about what the brand pieces are but let's talk about the story architecture architecture because brand ki story to likhni padegi na someone has to write it so we have to write it right uh, so now that if we have written on the brand voice uh, let's start to build a story right the easy structure to use is this uh, the problem slash gap in the world that inspire you to build something. Uh, what is your, so now yours can be your personal or your kind of the company, core impact objective. Uh, what kind of a company and product are you? What the community does um, in terms of the way you look at that, uh, look at the community. And finally, what does a customer one will get out of it? What is the reason for the customer to stick on, right? Uh, generic statement, but what I have done is I've written this down uh, or heads up for tails. Okay. So let me take you through how we speak about this at heads up for tails. Right. All right. So here we are. Just remove this. All right. So in 2007, the pet care market in India hadn't evolved as fast as the rest of the world. Right. So remember, I spoke about the problem. Right. So this is the problem. In 2007, the pet care market in India hadn't evolved as fast as the rest of the world. Rashi, who was a globally traveled pet parent, felt this gap when she wanted a cozy bed and healthy, clean food for Sarah, her golden retriever. Now, what we have done is we have personalized it, right? So suddenly when someone is reading this, imagine this is on our about us page. Um, when someone's reading this, they see that it's a human story, right? She realized there was no organized market for pet care and everything was either imported or made in terribly unhygienic conditions because pets weren't considered to be a prime consumer set, which is true, pets weren't, right? In 2007, no one was saying, I need a pet for a pet, I need a pet for a pet, right? Uh, unable to find anything in the market, she decided to make things on her own. Now, here is a, here's, a, here's a hero story evolving, right? Someone who went through a problem and decided that I'm just going to do this on my own. She dedicated her time to endless research, product prototyping, rejecting what was readily available in the market, pushing the boundaries of the pet industry at that time. Right? So she went through her journey, right? So she went through her travel. Heads of Tales was born with just three products and a vision to change the world, right? So now what we have said is there was a problem in the market. Someone had to get in and solve the problem. Rashi took it onto herself and went through rejection, went through deliberation, went through conscious choices to arrive at what today we see as Heads of Tales. Right, uh, and it was born with three products and a vision to change the world. Today, Heads Up for Tales is a trusted destination for pet parents. So now the journey is coming together, right? Today, Heads Up for Tales is a trusted destination for pet parents, built by a team of pet behaviorists. Now, Sachin, this is where this is how I answer your question, right? Built by a team of pet behaviorists 
vets, product scientists, grooming specialists, nutritionists, product designers, and volunteers. We're telling people the core of the organization, right? We're telling people what makes Heads of Tails, Heads of Tails. Today, uh, Heads of Tails is a trusted destination for pet parents built by a team of pet behaviorists, vets, product scientists, grooming specialists, nutritionists, product designers, and volunteers who are all pet parents. Now, this is significant because our organization only works with pet parents. There's no one in our entire 500 employee base actually who is not a pet parent, right? So who are all pet parents? Our community brings together the art and science of pet care. Yeah. So now what we have just done is we have said we started there, but look at the way now we are choosing to build this organization up. What are we committed to? We are committed to bring, making your journey. So now we are no longer speaking to generic. Now we are speaking one is to one. Now imagine this is on our website, right? Someone has come in on the website, so they're reading it. So now I no longer want to speak in generic terms. And now I want to speak one is to one. I want to speak to God, I want to speak to Ravina, right? So we are committed to making your journey of being a pet parent as enjoyable, stress-free, convenient, and nurturing as we can. The pet rooming services in nearly all of our 50 physical stores. Our website has over 5,000 products that are carefully and consciously chosen to be good for your pet. We don't bring you anything that we wouldn't give our own pets. Right? So we have given you choice, but at the same time, we have told you that we are choosing for you because we care about what we give our own pets. And our core brand philosophy is for family. So now we are bringing that in. While you might come to us for the love of your family, we know that you will grow with love from ours. Right? So if you just take this much and you share it, right? Might be on Instagram, might be on LinkedIn, might be on Facebook, might be wherever. You've essentially told people that Heads of Tales has, uh, thanks, Ramya. Sorry, Ramya, sorry, thanks. Uh, so what you've essentially done is you've told people that at the end of the day, we are here because we care, here we are here because we understand, um, and we are here because we are making some very important choices for you so that you don't have to choose very hard, right? I'm going to leave all of this with you, right? So you can start to craft your own brand messages, right? But look at all the things that we have gone through as of now. There's a personal brand in this. There's a brand as a company. There's a brand as people. There's a brand as product, service. Uh, there's a brand with a social impact. There's the brand sort of voice and tone that you will write is reflected across all these statements. And that, is, and that is why it's so important to write that. Because without writing that, this would not be well-informed, right? Uh, yes, this should flow onto the homepage um, and uh, try to make this into a story. So, sorry, I'm also reacting to chat uh, questions. Uh, so, so there's a chat question uh, from Aditya. So yeah, uh, 100% on the homepage, find a way to make it flow. Um, and I'm actually going to move to the next piece, which is uh, uh, which is the product piece. And after that, we will go on to the website piece if time permits. I have also tried to put a structure of how you can communicate better on the website. Okay, um, Sharath, if you could just keep a time check in general, I'm happy to go like ten minutes uh, extra, if that's okay with everyone. All okay. right. Yeah. All right. Thanks. All right, uh, product values. Uh, hey, listen, I think we've spoken about this in multiple ways, uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to a format, uh, which is this. It's a form, function, formulation, field format, okay? Um, this is not created by me, by the way. The only thing that I've added to this is field, okay? Form, function, formulation has been a format that has been used by Unilever for many, many years, okay? I think they have done a crap all job of it in most ways. Okay. Because large organization, we actually have a fantastic opportunity where if we can say, do we have a disproportionate advantage in the form of the product that we have bought? Is there a new functional benefit that we can speak about? Um, is there a formulation change that makes life better? Okay. This, by the way, can be applied to art. It can be applied to services. It can be applied to products. Let's let's take an example of how this might apply to uh, a cell phone. 
you know, over the years, the forms of cell phones have changed, right? So when motor razor came, they said, we're changing the form of the cell phone. Remember, there was a flip and it was sharp, right? So the form change that happened. Uh, Apple came in and said, I'm going to change the form to a point where it's candy bar. And then the Android market was already sort of there. But now there isn't, there, the only other form change that has happened is a fold, right? So even if you look at a form change, it sometimes ends up giving a very clear disproportionate advantage, right? So now people want a, people want a folding phone only because it's a fun form to play with, right? So people love form changes straight up, okay? I'll give you a, give an example of form change in d um, Effervescent tablets, okay? Just straight up taking basic effervescent tablets, which are nutritionally right, Ayurvedic inspired and so on and so forth. And just like being able to put one in water is fantastic. Sleepy Owl with the cold brew bags, form change, right? So you already had that at home, but now suddenly there's a new way of consuming that product, right? So there's a form change in that. Function change. I think what Harish is doing is a function change, right? Uh, it, it just the ability to take an Ayurvedic, uh, juice and package it in a way uh, where you're able to say, hey, here's a functional benefit from it. I think it's a huge, huge piece, right? Uh, let's look at formulation, right? Are we being able to speak to the formulation of what our product is? And is there a disproportionate advantage in that formulation? Um, for example, uh, in soda water, is there something that we can bring in from a formulation perspective, which people haven't had before, right? Uh, and feel this is the only thing that I've added, which I think is extremely relevant to the direct to consumer industry. Okay. Which is we are able to dictate the way people feel in most cases by writing about the way people should feel because this is, these are new categories. There are no baseline ways that people are going to associate feelings, right? So when someone is buying art online, when someone is buying jewelry online, when someone is buying uh, let's say any kind of, uh, uh, you know, um, personal care product online, they don't know how they should feel because there's no baseline to this because most of these products are new. We have the ability to define how that feel will be. And that is critical. That is where we are able to tell an interesting story. So we can tell people that you're going to feel light. You want to feel happier. You want to feel more powerful. You want to feel more energetic. You want to feel that you've made a smart decision then more often than not, people will say, or people will use the same words. There's a cognitive bias in the way we speak about things, right? Which is when someone tells us that this is amazing, 90% of the time we end up saying, this is amazing, right? Uh, it's the same way why some things become more popular, right? When 10 people say Squid Games is something you have to watch, we automatically get into the mode saying, hey, we have to watch it. And then we watch it, not because we sort of like it, but because we know that 10 people are going to speak about it. Right. So there's a cognitive bias that everyone goes through. We have to set the cognitive bias when people come to our website. So we have to tell them that, damn, if you don't use this product, then you're not going to have the nicest, sexiest beard in this world. But if you use it, you will. Right. Um, so I, I'm again not going very deep into this, but I will show you, I think, which is a classic example, and I'm sure a lot of you have seen this, of a bike ad which essentially took form function, not so much formulation, but uh, let's just assume that it's there. But they spoke about the feel, right? And I was a sucker, I ended up buying this bike. Um, I don't know, <laughs> dude, I did. Uh, okay, Sharad's laughing away to glory. Yeah, I did. Uh, I had this and had a bullet and this was far better, uh, honestly. If you have not seen this ad, um, you should. If you have, then just enjoy the next 45 seconds of it. Sorry, can you even hear it? Uh, can you play it again? Is it audible? I think you can share with... Uh, you, uh, so sometimes you might want to uh, reshare and share with audio. There's like a checkbox in Zoom uh, when you're sharing. Your Is it? Yeah, yeah. We have to share that audio. You have to stop oh. sharing and share again. That will work then. Oh, I have to stop sharing. Okay, yeah. hang on. Let me let me let me try this. Uh, share sound. Oh, okay, got it. Let's let's try this. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
sorry. Um, by the way, this is something I told Sharata already. I am, I'm not very comfortable with Zoom. It's, I'm such a noob, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Just give me one second. All right, I'm back. Uh, shall I try it? Yep. I forgive my father. I forgive women. I forgive my boss. Judge Avenger DTSI. All right. So there's a reason why I wanted to share this. Uh, one, I knew that by the time I'm done speaking about all of this, it'll be monotonous. And second, who doesn't like to feel like God? Uh, the thing is, if you notice what they did, they showed you the bike in all its glory, right? So we do see me product the khate, chitra, right? Uh, we show usage of the products. Most of us have been able to get our imagery absolutely bang on, right? Right. We spend a lot of effort and time in photography, production. We tell people how to use the product. We do beautiful unboxing, all of it. We do that, right? What we don't do is speak about the field. So just go through your website, okay? And if you're doing it, then fantastic. But if you aren't, then try and bring in a way to tell people how they will feel after they use the product, right? So once someone takes a shot, do they feel, Harish, do they feel lighter? Do they feel sharper? Do they feel stronger? Do they feel better? So because what you're assuming is they will be able to articulate how they feel. Most of us don't know how to articulate good experiences. Most of us are fantastic at articulating terrible experiences, right? Because we're angry, so we choose words. But, uh, but to articulate experiences where we've had a good time, it's very difficult because we end up saying, Achada, uh, good, awesome, uh, very nice. Yeah, that's not what we want because we're creating something we want people to tell us how they fucking feel. And they will not tell us how they feel if we don't put the right words in their mouth. So we have to choose the words that we want people to use. Okay. So if there's anything in this product piece, the one thing that you have to remember is to tell people what, what words they should use to describe how they feel after they have used the product. Okay. Last 20 minutes. I think we're going to get there. Hey, sorry, Tushti, go on. Yeah. Hi. So I Hi. had this question about the feel piece, right? So yeah. what is the right way of depicting it? Like, for instance, right, should it be the brand particularly talking about it or should it be the customer? So should it actually both. be through touch? Both. Okay. Both. Both. <laughs> uh, again, go back to the personal brand piece. Remember what was the last question? The last question was, uh, who else is going to say this who about else? you? Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Dude, that's it. Right. We need to have different people saying, I feel like this. So it doesn't like when the brand is talking about it, does it not look very overboard? Because, you know, you're already talking about the product, the features, the feel of it. And with the customer, I think that validation is coming. Or does it go overboard or does is it completely okay to do that? I think it's completely okay till someone says that you're faking it. Got it. And I don't think I, I don't think we're at the stage of maturity across the ecosystem where someone is going to stand up and say <laughs> that 
you know it's it's too much yeah. great others <laughs> not at all so uh, hi everyone uh, my my question is when we start working on the brand was the personal brand how the product should be and everything uh, that the 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 actions should happen in the initial stage of the business when you are just starting out but Correct. what will happen when your brand is around like say for so for us my family business is for around 42 years now and i'm the fourth right. generation uh, of the business how should i start doing it right now when it was not done before and i have to change the perception of the brand among the customers like how should that be carried out should i just change uh, it on our website or on our, our retail outlets or should i do anything else like no i i get your question like, uh, so uh, sorry you're breaking up a little telling no so adarsh you're breaking up a little um but if i was to understand your question your question is that we have had a legacy business for about 40 odd years you have taken over the legacy business now uh, and you're trying to revamp it and therefore you want to know do you change everything in that business or uh, or, or the way you articulate that business or should you should you not is that the question yes, yes. and how to okay. do that all right no um, how is is secondary um, oh. the 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 question is what do you need changed right um and the fact that you've spoken about change means that you want to change uh, so i'm just going to go with the premise that you want to change okay uh, and not really question why you want to change that's that's not my space right now um but you know here here is where i'm going to come in with a very clear submission and i think uh, this is something i've said about family run businesses in india okay Uh, because i worked in a lot of family run businesses and yeah that was that was a foundation uh, part of my life most family run businesses in india were built on absolutely right principles okay they were built on trust they were built on transparency they were built on empathy and they were built on fantastic credit lines okay so when you look at family run businesses the reason why so many of them are so bloody successful is because they were built on the right foundation and they were built on the right principles uh they were built on the backing of very strong vendor systems they were built on backing of very strong respectable ecosystem which were there to support and scale right you have to choose very carefully my friend what you want to change okay because with change comes disruption and with disruption you suddenly might end up losing a lot of that very strong equity that has been built over the last 40 years right i think the way you should look at it um and i don't know enough so maybe it's a side chat we should have at some point is to not look at change um as the core emotion uh as much as to look at reinvention as a core emotion and see if there is any one aspect that you want to reinvent that you want to speak of or you want to you want to sort of alter only so much that it doesn't disrupt the overall business okay i'm just very scared when you want to change too many things in a very strong legacy business because that legacy is what's helped you reach here um so sorry i do i don't really have a question of how uh, sorry answer for how um i think the larger question you should be asking and i'm clearly not informed well enough to answer that is what is it that you want changed and is it change or is it just evolution because if it change then it's replacement and replacement is a problem in in the current state that you are in um uh, apologies that i'm not answering it as directly because i don't have the right answer for it is it okay if we do this later offline sometime yes sure, sure. thanks all right uh manisha suram surmaya sorry hi yeah it's suramaya suramaya uh, okay hey surmaya you a quick question like um, yeah. how you mentioned that right? okay if someone comes onto your website and they say oh use this product or you won't have the sex cured ever so yeah. i just wanted to know like you know how some kind of marketing is like scary marketing like if you don't yeah. use the product your skin will be dull yeah like to what extent can people go on that like people really have to be scared right to like i don't know like how do you like how- i have never seen it work sorry i've never seen it work so like how much of fomo to create and like like negative kind of words that your skin is dull or should you be like oh your skin will be happy and healthy like you know so so two things right one is that you can't really use that in advertising anymore so your ads just won't run on facebook straight up okay uh, so that's one 
uh, more than that and philosophically uh, man you got to be clear about what you want to build your brand on right uh, i think if you want to build your brand on the now and here and you know fear psychosis which is what this is it's it's less fomo by the way it's more fear psychosis and far more uh, far more that uh, sorry far less fomo and far more fear psychosis um i think you're doing the now and here and the problem with now and here is that the consumers evolved they have become far more discerning over the last many years if i was to see it right now it's cringe and more often than not i'll be like hey yeah right i mean dude you're not a lifesaver for me so so don't even get there um yeah i would avoid it i think you if you have a fantastic product which genuinely does solve a problem just let them know what problem it solves rather than telling them that they already have the problem they know that they have the problem right um yeah manisha hi um since hey. you've been talking about uh, hindustan unilever and all this we are into a personal yeah. care and hygiene category yeah. so basically our company started with the oem so we do oem yeah. for reliance tata star bazaar yeah. there everywhere and we started our own brand with care right yeah. so and how you told us the story so we i means i'm we are trying to portray our brand as india ka apna hygiene brand so Got about it. the quality and all yeah i'm quite this thing because i know it's the same stuff that is getting manufactured and we are trying to give it at factory pricing you know yeah. like people say we're giving premium quality at premium pricing but here we are at factory pricing and all and our vision is basically to get to 80% of the household market you know in india especially and be a household name in the indian market so when you're talking about all these things i feel we have a story we have a we have good pricing good packaging good product but just that brand awareness you know how you said that feel factor yeah i it's just slightly very confusing how to reach there after okay and um, uh, okay got it just, no sorry carry on no i mean to say it's it's that's it's not that our sales a sales touch would you know it's going quite good and all like from 2% of the company what we are doing doing in sales we have grown to 20% obviously because of the covid situation and now even after post covid it's just growing because people have accepted the brand and the quality of it when there were nobody in the market and then they had this products to use yeah but the fact is to reach out more to people that's like my major concern and how to go about it correct so can i can i answer this in a way that might not be extremely comfortable for you but i'm still going to say it uh you're unfortunately in a bathroom category right you're in a category which is guarded away no one advertises that category no one says i am using this care right uh i i just came out of a bathroom category uh bombay shaving company is clearly that right stuff is just kept in the bathroom and no one really speaks about it no one speaks about again it's the same whether no one speaks about what kind of sanitary napkins they use or no one yeah. speaks about what kind of toothpaste they what use right so saying is just i'm so sorry just a small intervention again yeah. i would like to listen to you what you're saying is perfectly right because people have it all bottles like by bottles and they will refill it with a bis hand wash can because it's a good quality and it's the cheapest product people are getting on amazon and all over online and i've seen yeah. that i've seen that repeatedly yeah so now unfortunately people don't speak about cheap products you know why because no one in india wants to say that we are buying cheap okay um india is unfortunately a market that's led through uh high aspiration high credit worthiness um low savings and very bad frugal practices in terms of economics uh so we want to buy cheap but we want to advertise that we are not uh that's unfortunately the emerging middle class on the way it's all of us been um uh, you have to find a reason manisha and i don't have the reason for you okay but i'm just going to say this you have to find a reason for people to bring this conversation out of the bathroom now no one is going to put it on instagram saying i've used this today right but is yeah. the community of let's say homemakers right who can speak about it as a part of their daily ritual right is it for example a mommy community which trusts the product a lot more than anything else I think what I have not heard in the last, you know, twenty seconds of you speaking is trust. What I've heard is uh, price. I've heard quality, but I don't know why people trust you. Do they trust you because you're cheap, or do they trust you because of the high quality, or do they think that it's high quality at the right price? Right? No, 
I don't have answers to any of this, right? These are just questions out there. But you have to figure out why people trust you. And if you know why people trust you, then you have to figure out that what is that one community which will speak about why they trust you. It's, remember Harpe Care? They got that damn right to go into people's homes and look at toilets. How bloody unappetizing. But TV pe dikhaya unho ne. Thik hai? Ya ambi pure. Wo boman e rani ko unho ne. Wo naat band karke dikhaya. Dikhaya na. So at the end of the day, the thing is that no matter how unappetizing the category perception for Instagram is, you don't need to build it on Instagram. Right? You, you have a different channel to build it. In your case, it might just be Facebook groups where you're building it. Right? Uh, you might be building it in mommy groups. You might be building it in different kinds of homemaker groups. So choose your community. Don't solve for it on Instagram where the, clearly the population is 18 to a 21 who are far more real creators than anything else, right? And it's extremely algorithm. So I think you have to choose your platform well. And within, once you actually first you have to choose your community and then you have to know where that community is spending maximum amount of time. And after you know where the community is spending the maximum amount of time, you have to figure out that one content piece which we can speak about. It's not about 10 voices it's about that one voice which says with ways i am i feel now here as well i don't know how they feel right with this i feel maybe safer maybe better taken care of so on and so forth right uh, smarter Just, maybe i don't know yeah one small thing like how you said yeah. so we have we have done a lot of innovations also like from hand wash hand sanitizer wipes we've gone to the deodorant body wash category which we yeah. feel from a you know to the teenager or the college student can use it more and show up you know like how like they want to figure out what is right to be used and all so it's not only a bathroom category which you're right the sales happen only in that category and not on deodorants that much though we are coming out with the innovative products yeah, well, I mean, right now, unfortunately, for the next six months, you don't have to solve for deodorants because the season for deodorants is gone. Yeah, so I know. So solve Launched for, at the wrong solve for, time. Yeah, so solve for, solve for the other piece. Uh, and once you have done that, then you'll be able to solve for this. Okay, thank you. Yeah. This is quite no worries. Yeah. Avinash. Yeah, hi. So, so I'm a very, like, you know, the, the reality uh, related questions, like, you know, the scale we are at or the business, we do not have the resources of uh, MNC would have and all that. So my question is that how do we build and prioritize brand building? You know, like founder is like most of the day busy with the firefighting and the saving sales, cash flow and all that. So what kind of rituals we can build internally in the team? Ki thi ke important hai, let's you know, start focusing it. Because it's a slow learning process, immediate sales nahi aegi, wo ek more of good feel hai reflection dhere dhere hoga and all that so how do we build it in the culture that's one part second is that how do we measure the success of such branding activities are they like you not know, some uh, tried and tested tools and all that so yeah these are the questions that i want uh i'll handle your second question later because i have that already uh, okay. how to measure success um second man the culture has to start from you uh, culture always starts from the founder at the end of the day you are not building a business uh, right business to koi bhi karlega you are trying to make sure that, uh, you know, the only mode that you have really right now is the brand. Uh, dude, products can be replicated so quickly in today's world that before you know it, uh, your product, same formulation, same packaging, change the last thing that you want to do is that. What, what I think you need to philosophically address with your team is that where are we in terms of our brand space, right? Um, are people organically coming to us? Uh, has our CAC lowered? Um, is, are we having a lot of social conversations around our product line? Do people love us, right? In fact, one question I used to ask a lot of founders when I was working uh, with multiple brands is, will people miss you if you're gone? Right? And if the answer is you don't know, then why the heck are you even doing this? Why are you in this relationship if no one's going to miss you, right? So you need to be doing things where people will miss you if tomorrow you stop to exist. Yeah. Um, so I think it's a culture thing, man. Uh, you got to set it. Um, doesn't come easy. Okay. Yeah. Arjun. Nice. Dude, I love your beard, man. Oh, thanks. <laughs> this is my, uh, I'm trying to go November look. Go for it. 
फर्स्ट ऑफ बिग फैन ऑब्वियसली ऑफ हाफ आई हैव अ डॉग एंड आई थिंक दैट डॉग्स एंड पेट्स इन जनरल कम लाइक रियली लाइक नॉट टू फार बिलो किड्स लाइक यू कैन सेल एनी थिंग थ्रू किड्स इन दिस कंट्री बिकॉज वॉट वुड यू नॉट डू फॉर योर किड्स आई थिंक पेट्स पेट पेरेंट्स नो दैट दैट्स हाउ यू फील अबाउट पेट्स इज वेल दैट्स अ ब्यूटिफुल थिंग not to devalue some of the branding work you guys have done because yeah. i know i look at half and i'm just like look that is just brilliant everything i get there is going to be spot on so yeah. i think the the question i'm trying to get at is one of the issues that we have in like the food space is a lot of like people just feeling like they need to serve a purpose you know like in, in yeah. terms of like, oh i need to put a sauce um yeah. so the question that really comes up um, out here is like they're looking for value but they're not sure i need to create a certain value for nagan sauce where people are looking yeah. at it and saying look it's okay for me to spend 250 on this rather than 120 on like biba because yeah. i know what i'm going to get is like a unique product like all of these guys are selling products that everyone can buy in the market and right like companies sell you things that they know you can buy not necessarily yeah. what's the best thing for you um yeah. and i think like we in this case are definitely looking at like unique flavors but you know what a harissa tastes like you know what a peri peri tastes yeah. like you know you know but no one knows what a sankeshwari or a kanta you know kanta ri chili might taste yeah. like so so how do i convince like how would you propose that like one one of the routes i could go down in terms of getting people to appreciate that the value of the product is so much higher like don't look for value through me discounting my product rather than try and just understand that look this is you can you can you can buy six beers in a night and spend a thousand or you can buy one bottle of hot sauce and like enjoy all your food for a month you know like that's such an yeah. easy thing for me to understand but like how do i get that feeling of increased percept perceive value from the customers like any suggestions on a fmcg product like this uh, yeah one it's unfortunately still not fmcg yeah john um uh, <laughs> it's cg it's not a yeah, fair enough uh, fair enough right um the second thing and the more important piece for you to recognize um is is the fact that you literally and I'm going to use this term you're in the cultural sauce right that there's just a there's a fantastic cultural movement that can be built around having hot sauce okay the fact is yeah. you're not building a culture you are selling a product okay mm -hmm. now if there is a culture of having coffee in the morning before you go and then going out for coffee breaks and having a beer that's culture right but the indian culture yeah. unfortunately because we already eat spicy food um mm -hmm. the indian culture doesn't really dictate that you need to have a hot sauce with your food right yeah. so the challenge is that you're already selling spices to a spice market yeah uh you have to replace some behavior for this to become very very prevalent okay so pick one thing that you think you're going to be able to replace as a behavior and go after that like fucking mad man like just just it's like this if you can say that eating i actually have never tasted your sauce so i can't go to the taste part of it but imagine if you were to say that you cannot have ketchup for breakfast right or ketchup at any point of time mm -hmm. if you're above 20 right yeah i mean it's almost like saying after 20 you can catch up yeah catch up with your kids like just yeah. kill fucking catch up kill yeah. something dude right i mean my thing is if you need to go with a nagan you, name so you got to kill somebody absolutely right but the fact is that that's not your stance your stance is i have a product Dude, yeah, I don't fair. give a shit what flavors you have, because yeah. right now the flavors I am eating, they're fine. There's nothing wrong with them. Right. But you haven't told me that there's something wrong with the food that I'm eating. Gotcha. Okay. Like, butcha hai kya? Ketchup kyun khara? Yeah. So fair replace enough. something, right? <laughs> to replace something. So replace the damn ketchup. That's really good. That's really good. Appreciate it. That's really good. No worries, man. I can get completely out of town now, dude. How do we do this, Sharad? Yeah, I think some with us. So we are uh, <laughs> from your ETA. How much time do you think you will take from your commute? I have about five to seven minutes more, man, and I still have so much left. Um, 
but actually the next two parts are fast enough um so yash jasmine is it okay if you guys send me your questions and i could probably reply to them does that work yeah you could like i will i will leave my contact details at the end of this and you could just write to me or just just you know hit me up on linkedin that's easier does that work sure and sure then i could just complete this in the next 10 if that's okay thank you so much i'm so sorry uh, right. yeah we should we should always spark more time for this sharath <laughs> learning <laughs> all right <laughs> yeah uh, all right hey listen i have found this super helpful okay i'm just going to leave this here because this is the way i really look at almost every communication piece that we build um people don't read everything uh, people scan okay um and there is a f shape bias nielsen did the study um in fact you can just search for f pattern on on google and you will find it interestingly people just scan text okay just scan and they just look for the top three things that uh, that stick okay so whenever you are writing anything my suggestion would be this put the most important content right at the top so which is like make a big headline right so even if you see it it's i have, this is also an f you see where my mouse is going through so this is one and then two and then three right this is an f you literally have an f here so clearly you're reading the the same content piece imagine this was a website you would read it the same way and that's why i very deliberately made the f here right you subheadings and bullet lists place important content on the left side because we read like that right so even on the phone try and bring in the most readable pieces on the left even when you're optimizing for mobile leave some space on the right that's okay and focus on the first two words of your subhead always so the first two words in this case is the f right so you automatically sort of get hooked to it um the reason why i'm leaving this is because a lot of us are probably in the and i was going to the questions in terms of how do we design for better readability how do we design for better consumption of content how do we design for uh, for stickiness um, on the website so these are some of the things so i thought this is a, this is a good format that's worked for me uh, feel free to uh, use it uh, you just need someone in your team uh, idly you to be able to replicate this onto the website okay uh, not just website even when you're designing a social post for example uh, so on and so forth right anyway <coughs> the f the f pattern sort of works across right um all right last piece um is uh, these are the four metrics that whenever i run any brand campaign these are the only four metrics that i look at i look at organic visits plus i look at conversions percentage of the organic visit um i see if it's lowering my cac Right, straight up, I look at repeat uh, purchases. Uh, so essentially, I look at an LTV format. I look at social engagements and followers. I think any other any other metric that you put on top of this is complete vanity. Don't solve for impressions, shares, views. For now, I'm kind of what's about chair vanity. Who are paying for that? All that, right? What you need to look for is if you've created a piece of content, um, or if you're doing uh, your SEO pieces right, or if you're doing your app store optimization right i don't i don't know if any of you operate apps um what you essentially are looking for is the ability to churn your organic visits plus conversion percentages from the branding exercise um has your cac cac come down by about 5 to 10 odd percent over a period of uh, the branding activity uh what kind of impact has it had on the ltv of from the people who have come in through the branding activity um uh, just to give you a sense uh, in bombay shaming and we would do a brand led uh um, sort of funnel right which was more about top of the line awareness uh, top funnel expansion creation all of it we would see that our ltv from that was about 15 to 20 percent higher than our ltv uh, as compared to the paid audience which would come in right uh percentage conversion was also higher in organic and then there was a certain amount of social engagement that was inherent to that uh, organic audience that used to come in so i think it's a very uh, very interesting piece uh, where if you were to solve for only four pieces this is, you should solve for according to me um anything else is uh, management oversight matlab dekh lo chahiye to chahiye it's more it's more to solve for stakeholder engagement um but if at the core of it solve for these four okay um, um just one question uh, yeah, does this sure. include offline also well, the branding activities that we do offline does this in, has this to be does this has to be integrated with those metrics 
uh, if you can, uh, which means that if you're doing something offline, uh, try and find a way to leave a code there so that when people are coming onto the website, they're able to use that code, right? And you can measure the impact of that. Uh, or if you're putting a QR code literally for people to scan through and come to uh, your site, then make sure that at least that, that tracking is very, very clear. Um, if it's about social mentions, then make sure that those social men mentions are being tracked through. Um, I generally see that the offline pieces, while they can result in a little bit higher uptick of traffic, um, they don't necessarily result in a higher uptick in commerce. The reason is offline consumption still in India is a very entertainment consumption. Uh, you know, we go to malls and we go to places to get entertained. And entertainment clubbed with commerce barely ever happens. Uh, it takes a period of time. I mean, I went drink I Right? Just an example. Uh, whereas what happens is you get a bunch of social mentions from it, if it's Instagram friendly. So I think that is something that I would solve for on offline as compared to online. I would solve for more content, uh, social content offline, um, and not just commerce content offline, if that makes sense. Understood. Yeah. All right. Um, I've actually answered a bunch of FAQs here. I'm not going to read them out. Um, it'll be in the document that we'll send out to you guys uh, and here are my details so yeah um i am i'm actually done all right awesome uh, so i'm sorry i have not answered so many questions uh is email marketing conversion also part of this yes 100 percent um even performance yep um yeah uh, all right good I, I think there's side chats happening which is all good uh i'm sorry i don't have a good copywriting book man uh, you just write uh, if you write well you write well three brands that i really like in terms of brand positioning uh red bull mikey uh, and from an indian perspective fab india i think uh, we've just, they've just got it right and they've just been consistent at it anything else sorry i'm just going through the questions sure all right, no, I think we're good. Yep, uh, I think we are. So obviously, given we go over time, uh, so first session is obviously a great sign. Uh, but uh, you know, there's uh, two, three things I want to share. Uh, first is, uh, you know, like, uh, so, uh, Samrit, thank you so much for taking out the time. Not at all, man. Being I'm over enthusiastic for you solving a lot of these qu uh, questions for our people in our cohort. Uh, honestly, fine. there's a lot of lovely nuggets, uh, you know, which have come out in this conversation, uh, be it you're replacing or killing ketchup. Uh, you're all focusing on feeling, right? Uh, which a lot of us, you know, will be putting in their stories. Uh, to be honest, when I heard you, you know, share that the half story, uh, you know, it's something which I think a lot of these brands can literally do themselves and put it on their LinkedIn. That might yeah. just be one of the homeworks we would want to suggest to all of you over this weekend to start writing for your brand, right? And putting it out there. Uh, that being said, uh, there's normally we do the ritual at the end of the day, but because it's somewhere, then we've done a phenomenal session. I want to really thank him from the depths of our heart. So. Uh, I'm just going to do a small uh, share my screen on something. We so the cohort is a little aware of it. Some uh, some basically what we do is uh, we play our waiting room music. And, okay. Uh, uh, I just want to check if you can hear my audio, right? I can hear your audio. And I hope we can all see our screens together. Uh, if we can, uh, so what we do is we do a roll up between three to one, and so we put our hands in front of the screen because we can't be physically available. But okay. this is our, uh, sort of our standing ovation for you know taking all the time for doing this for us. Oh, it's my pleasure. So everyone, just put their hand in front of their screen. Uh, I hope we can all see the, the screens and uh, we'll do a countdown between three, two, one, and go team. So somewhere if you want to join us, just yeah, sure. <laughs> and uh, uh, you can all unmute your mics. Whoever has it, sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then we'll do a countdown. Ready? What am I supposed to do? Go do this. So we're going to do three, two, and one. Ready? I feel like I'm not what? <laughs> no, no, it, it makes us mean more closer. So three, two, one, go team. Go team. Go team. Go team. Go team. Go team. Uh, lovely. Thank you so much, Samrit. Thank you. Not at all, yeah. My Thank pleasure. You. Thank you. Best. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions Thank you, I'm really, I'm available. All right, take it easy. Great Bye. session. Bye. Thank, Thank you. Yes, Thank you. We'll share his details. we we'll share also the content which he has shared. Uh, we'll discuss anything else. We have some other plans, but uh, I really appreciate him going overboard. Uh, no worries, man. Is the next session, by the way, guys, uh, on marketplace optimization, guy uh, Arindam Paul leads marketing at Atomberg. 
very very different side uh, but also very rich spot for us to get trying uh, so look forward to having all of you guys there and uh, thank you all take care everyone see you bye thank you so much thank you